and happy holidays. And I'm going to be coming at you with a DVD Blu-ray update featuring all of the movies that I've ever seen or picked up or been sent uh, over the past few months or so. Uh, so let's just get straight into it. Uh, the first one is Runaway Train, and this is an absolutely amazing movie, uh, by far one of the best movies I've seen this year, about these two criminals who escape this um, Alaskan prison, uh, pretty high security prison, and they escape onto this train, which isn't actually manned by an engineer or anything, uh, so they're basically on there on their own, and it's going at an incredibly fast pace, and they've got to figure out how to stop it. Um, great cinematography in this, love the atmosphere, uh, love it, it's set in winter, very snowy, and yeah, they're basically on the run from uh, the prison officer and the police, and they come into contact with uh, the only rail worker that's left on the train, uh, played by Rebecca de Mornier, or Rebecca de Mornay, can't pronounce that, fucking hell, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, just a really incredible movie. Uh, it's great to see uh, movies like this that uh, are only set in one place for the entire movie. Uh, it just really challenges the characters' um, interactions with one another. And yeah, I really would recommend this. By far one of the best movies I've picked up this year. Uh, this release itself is pretty weird. At first I thought it was a bootleg, but it's actually some weird re Region 4 uh, release, it turns out. Um, but yeah, very strange release. That one. Uh, the next one is a movie I've had in my collection for quite a while, admittedly, and is the movie that is. Uh, hang on. No, it isn't. It's Cliffhanger. I, I really think it's stupid when they put the fucking tagline for the movie bigger than the actual fucking title, but whatever. This is um, a pretty good Sylvester Stallone movie. Uh, it's essentially a heist movie, uh, but it also deals with Sylvester Stallone being this sort of mountain rescue, mountain climber guy, uh, who gets taken hostage by these uh, people who send out a false distress signal in order to, uh, yeah, keep him and make him climb mountains so they can locate this money that they've uh, misplaced. And it is a pretty decent movie. Uh, the main villain in this, I forgot uh, which actor, what the actor's name is, but the main villain in this is uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, I do believe he's written a few books on Donald Trump, uh, but I just can't seem to uh, remember his name. But yeah, cliffhanger. Pretty decent movie. Uh, again, another very good movie to watch in the winter, just a very snowy movie. Next one is Silver Bullet, and this is a great werewolf movie, Stephen King. Uh, this is, again, some weird release of this, but I think it's French-Canadian, this release. Um, Gary Busey plays an amazing character as this like wacky uncle who creates his nephew, this weird um, chair, his nephew of course played by Corey Haim but yeah weird sort of wheelchair because Corey Haim's character is disabled in this but yeah just such a really quite a funny movie really um I wouldn't really say it's a horror movie but it's well it kind of is but not so much as anything else in the horror uh, category but yeah but Gary Busey's character is pretty much why I'd recommend you watch this uh, pretty entertaining movie. The next one is one I've been wanting to pick up for quite a while and I finally found it for a decent ish price. You're never going to really find this for an amazing price, but it's Mystic Zimbabwe. And uh, this is basically a really crazy movie uh, based on this uh, Asian, I think South Asian folklore of this weird supernatural being called a Layek. And basically this movie is about a girl that gets transformed into this um, levitating head and a, a, vamp a vampiric levitating head which has its guts and all internal organs sort of just dropping from, from the neck. It's uh, a pretty crazy movie, uh, but this is the Mondo Macabro release of this and 
those editions now are just really expensive, but I think this is the best edition that's ever going to be released of this movie, so I've actually been looking for this for quite a few years, finally found it for a cheap and decent price, um, so yeah. Next one is Trading Places, uh, Eddie Murphy, Dan Aykroyd, a uh, great sort of comedy duo. Um, yeah, a lot of really inappropriate scenes in this, uh, well, one inappropriate scene in particular involving a gorilla. Um, but yeah, basically, Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd's characters swap roles. Um, yeah, it's just quite a, an interesting uh, movie. Um, not one of Eddie Murphy's best. To be honest, a lot of his movies are uh, hit or miss. Um, but yeah, if you like 80s comedy, check it out. Uh, next one is Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, starring Steve Martin. A great sort of um, nod to old classic noir films with Steve Martin's um, unique style um, put in there as well. Um, lots of cameos in this of old movie stars. Yeah, if you're a fan of silly comedy and Steve Martin's specific comedy in general, then I would definitely recommend this. Um, yeah, definitely a huge fan of Steve Martin. Uh, next one is a movie I actually watched on Netflix, and it was so interesting I had to just pick it up on DVD as well. A group of these people who go to clean up this uh, abandoned mental institution, uh, and they basically uh, need to rid it of asbestos. And uh, yeah, it basically it's just a very creepy film. Uh, what you think is going to happen never actually happens, in my opinion anyway, I just thought it was going to be uh, some ghost movie set in an insane asylum, and it turned out to be something so much more and uh, deeper than that. But yeah, uh, this actually does include some deleted scenes which in my opinion, ruin the movie. I wouldn't recommend watching those unless you are interested. But definitely a great haunting movie. Um, uh, and the main character, David uh, Caruso, who plays uh, a character called Gordon, who's the sort of head of this group who go to clean out this asbestos. Um, it does a great job um, in this, and definitely the main reason why to why you should watch this. Um, but yeah, definitely recommended. The next one is a, another festive movie, Christmas Evil. Um, this is a pretty, I don't know, I was kind of torn between this. It's basically about some paedophile Santa that goes around um, killing people, but he, he still delivers presents to kids, you know, he's not completely evil. Um, so I don't know. He suffers some trauma as a kid, and with his parents. Uh, basically, a scene having sex in the living room, and his dad's dressed as Santa, and he grows up to be this killer Santa. Um, but basically, it's got some pretty funny scenes in this, and it is sort of like a tragic story. Um, I don't think it's as good as Silent Night, Deadly Night. But it's definitely uh, up there as one of those uh, good Christmas slasher movies. So yeah, that's that one. The next one is Scooby-Doo Happy, Halloween, Happy Halloween Scooby-Doo. And this one is... Uh, it's okay. Um, it's Definitely the style of animation is good. Uh, a lot of... See, the thing is now DC and Warner Brothers... <coughs> For some reason, are including characters from different universes within Warner Brothers, if that makes sense. So, you've actually got Jonathan Crane from fucking Batman as one of the main villains in this. Um, and the uh, pumpkin things in this as well actually do remind me of the uh, pumpkin sort of monster things from Witch's Ghost. So I guess that was a good sort of nod to that, but uh, yeah, this really isn't anything new or special or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that's that, and I guess the Blu-rays now. 
uh, Edge of the Axe. This is the Arrow video release. Um, pretty unique slasher movie. Uh, not a very well known one. So it's a good job of Arrow for bringing this one out. It's Blu-ray treatment. Um, I have to say I didn't really enjoy this. I thought it was quite boring. Uh, the twist at the end caught me off guard. As I'm sure it did a lot of people watching for the first time. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's not really anything too special. I'll probably get rid of this one. Um, but yeah, it does have quite a good twist at the end, so for that reason, i probably recommend it. Next is the Rambo Blu-ray. Um, this is the 2008 Rambo movie. I've never actually seen this. I'd only have ever seen the original trilogy from the 80s. Um, but yeah, this is a pretty fucking brutal movie to say that you know, it completely went under my radar. Um, about Rambo basically uh, leading this group of... Uh, I think they're sort of like just religious people uh, into Burma, which is essentially a war zone, and yeah, you can kind of guess what happens from there. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, one that I would recommend checking out as well. Great action movie. Just no dull moments, just complete action. Uh, the next few were sent by uh, my friend Tim, and I won't show all of them because I actually haven't actually seen any of them, and I don't really know anything about them. Uh, but I'll show a few. So, uh, it's Welcome to the Jungle, sort of some cannibal movie. We uh, did include a note as well. Uh, says with a ho 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 and a merry fuck you uh, here are some DVDs to fill your stockings with may the merry Christ may the happy Christmas morning bless you good sir from the rats of Birmingham so yeah uh, comical note there but yeah I don't really know anything about this other than it's just a sort of cannibal movie uh, don't know if it's anything like Green Inferno or anything like that uh, but it definitely looks interesting. The next one is La Bete, which is a French movie, I believe, and it translates to The Beast. But yeah, wow, uh, this is a fucking, sounds like a one hell of a, a trip. <laughs> um, read a lot about this on IMDb, a lot of fucking scenes where this weird beast thing ejaculates. Um, throughout the entire movie uh, definitely sounds like a fucked up movie but I'm definitely willing to check it out and um, he said it's actually quite an entertaining film so yeah can't wait to watch that one and the one of the ones that honestly I'm in well I'm actually considering uh whether to throw this in the bin or whether just to chuck it in the neighbor's skiff because with a film like Blind Beast versus Killer Dwarf, you know you're probably not gonna be in for any kind of quality filmmaking, but I mean, I could be wrong. Um, it could be one that inevitably gets chucked in the cupboard and or the drawer of doom, never to be seen again, but I could be wrong. It could be going in the skiff or even the bin. So, uh, yeah, um, I'll check it out and make a choice on the basis of whether or not it is complete garbage or whether it amuses me, so, yeah. But all in all, that has been my update for December uh, 2020. I'll probably be making some new videos in the new year as well, uh, and I'll also be making some best of 2020 videos. But yeah, uh, that has been my update video for this month. Please like, comment, subscribe and see you in the next one.